Good morning. Uh, my name is Andy Nelms, and I have uh, the privilege of being an associate pastor here at Lovers Lane, the pastor here at Thrive, and so excited to get to worship with you this morning. If it's uh, your first time, I want to say welcome. Uh, first time online, first time here in person, we are so glad that you are here, that we have an opportunity to worship with you this morning. We are in a sermon series uh, called God's Story, and it's all about uh, finding ourselves in the story of God. What we learn about Jesus uh, is that when he is asked a a question, a a difficult question, or when it comes time for him to give a teaching, instead of just saying outright uh, what to do, what to think, how to act, Jesus instead tells a story. Uh, We call them parables, but but Jesus tells a story, and and when he does, he invites the listeners, both the, the first kind of early listeners in the ancient Near East and us today, he invites the listeners to place themselves within that story. And, uh, and so uh, for the last several weeks, we've been kind of going through different parables of Jesus, different stories of God, and, and placing ourselves within those scripture. And uh, this morning, you, you heard Miss Naomi illustrate this, this story um, that really illustrates greed. And, and as I was thinking about, um, about greed in my own life, I was thinking, you know, like, where does, where does greed come up? And, I, and I've realized something about myself. Um, I... I don't have like a lot of like physical clutter in my life, but I have realized this, that I am a digital hoarder. Um, does anybody else ever do this? If I ever, thank you, Rafe, if I ever get an email that says some, you know, ebook, some app is free, I immediately click it. Like, I, like and, 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 and here's the thing, like, I'll get, you know, like, free ebook, you know, and it doesn't even matter what it is. You know, it could be something that I, like, I've never, you know, learned how, how to, you know, how to plant asparagus, you know? I'm like, okay, I, I might want to do that someday, and so I download it, and then I put it in a file, you know, under A for asparagus, and, um, and, and then it just lives there f- forever, and in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, this isn't bad because it's digital. You know, it's not really physical. But, I'm, like, eventually that stuff is going to, like, clutter up. You know, like, eventually I'm going to have to, like, you know, buy a, an external hard drive and, and then store my, all my asparagus information on one hard drive. You know, like, like I am a digital hoarder. And what I've, realized is that, that, what I've realized is this, and maybe you know this as well, that more leads to more. More leads to more. And, and this can be a really good thing in our life. You know, more, more love leads to more love. When we have love in our life and we, and we strive after more love, it, it will continually lead to more love. And that is a great thing. More generosity leads to more generosity. When we are generous in our life and we strive to be more generous with our possession, with our finances, with, with everything that we have, when we are generous and we strive to be more generous, we will continually, that will be a never-ending goal to be more generous. And that is a great thing. But it can also be something that's negative, right? More stuff leads to more stuff, right? Our, our, our goal, our, our striving to, to gather more and more things, to, to have more stuff by the end of our life, we will continually go until and, and we are consumed by this passion for more and more more money. The, the, the goal, the striving for more money will, will continually lead to more money. More house will, will continually lead to the strive for more house. There's all of these things that if we strive just for a blanket more, we will never stop. And here's the thing, having plenty of you know, money, having plenty of house is not a bad thing. But if that's our goal in life, then we will never be satisfied with what we have. And so my hope, my prayer is that we would learn this morning, regardless of what you believe. You, you may be here this morning and, and not know you believe about Jesus. You may be watching this morning and not know exactly what you believe and just be kind of checking stuff out. I want to say, that's fine. I'm glad you're here. And my hope, my prayer for us this morning is, is that we would, we would stop striving for the wrong things. And and that we would go for more of what's good in our lives. And that's what we learned from this this parable this morning. And and Jesus tells this story, tells this parable. And and, and I love this preface. So we're going to be in the Gospel of Luke. If you have your Bible with you, if you use your phone, however you engage with the Bible this morning, I encourage you to do that. We're going to be in the Gospel of Luke this morning, chapter 12. Uh, Jesus says this in verse 13 of chapter 12 of the Gospel of Luke. Uh, The writer says, someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But Jesus said to him, 
Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? So Jesus is a rabbi. He's a teacher. Uh, and, and he is kind of considered in high esteem. And so uh, th- this kind of role of rabbi sometimes extended beyond, you know, kind of like scriptural teaching would go um, to kind of these, these judge jobs. But, but I, I, I like this. This, this is an interesting thing. Um, so in, in the time of Jesus, there was what was called the, the paterfamilias, the, the head of household, right? And, and so this person w- was kind of responsible um, for organizing the rest of the household. And, and typically this was the father until that father died and then would go to the, to the next oldest son. And so likely what happened here is that um, the two brothers' father has died and has left the responsibility for, for caring, kind of like an executor, right? He has left the responsibility for caring um, for the rest of the family to the oldest son. And, and here, the, the, younger son, the younger brother, the younger son is saying, tell my brother to divide that with me, right? That, that he has more than I do. Tell him to divide it with me. Now, now this may seem like a, a kind of reasonable request, but when we look at this, what we realize is that this younger brother has looked at his older brother and realized how much more he has than himself, and so many times we can get caught up in this, where we can be satisfied. That, that striving for more has kind of abated for a bit until we see somebody else's things. We were satisfied with our house until, you know, we, we watched some show on TV about, you know, the, the, the extra room that somebody had and used it, you know, for, for whatever. And, and, we, and then we become dissatisfied with what we have. We, we were satisfied with our car until, you know, our neighbor got a new one. We, we were satisfied with all of this. We were satisfied with our job, with our family, with our work. We were satisfied with all of it until we saw someone else. And that's what happens to us, friends. I hope that we know this morning this truth, that comparison is the stealer of joy. If you hear nothing else this morning, I hope you hear this. Comparison is the stealer of joy. If we compare ourselves, our lives to somebody else and and, and hold them up next to each other, we will never be happy. If if we have to be better, if we have to be more successful, if we have to be X, we have to take more vacations, if we have to do this more than somebody else, then we will never be happy. Why? Because comparison is the stealer of joy. So here this, this younger brother is saying, Jesus, you know, I don't want to hear a teaching from you. I don't want to, I don't want to see a miracle. I want you to, to make this right with me and my brother. I want you to tell him to divide the family inheritance with me because I think that's what ought to happen. And Jesus kind of sidesteps the question and says, who made me judge or arbitrator over you? Right? Is this really my responsibility? Is this really the, the, you know, like the most that you need from me right now is this thing? And so Jesus begins to tell them a parable. And he begins it this way in Luke Chapter 12, verse 15. Take care, be on your guard, Jesus said to them, against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Jesus, in essence, said, more leads to more. One's life does not consist of the abundance of possessions. Whenever you die with a lot of things around you, you still die. That's still going to happen for us. No, no matter how much money we have saved in the bank, no matter how big of a house we have, no matter how many things we own, no matter how successful we were at our work, no, no matter how successful our family is, we are still going to die. Life does not consist in the abundance of accomplishments or of possessions. And Jesus tells them a parable. In Luke chapter 12, verse 16, he said, The land of a rich man produced abundantly. Produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. And then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. Now, now this sounds like a very wise farmer. Right? There, there was a farmer, and he had like a bumper crop, right? He, he had an abundant crop one year, so much that, that, that he didn't have enough storage to hold it all. He had all of this crop, and, and he came in, and he didn't have enough stores to hold it all. And he said, what am I going to do? And so he decides, he decides to tear down his barns and build bigger ones. But notice what the farmer doesn't do. 
the farmer doesn't decide to share the abundance with his family or friends. Right? He doesn't look around him and, and see family and friends who are in need and say, you know what, this, this came in, this is kind of like easy come, easy go. The, 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 this, all of this came in, I could distribute to those who have need. The, the farmer doesn't distribute the funds to his worker. Right? He had produced a, this large crop. He is not the only one working at this farm. Right? He, he is not the one out there with the sickle doing the whole thing and gathering all the grain and, and processing it. He is not the only one. And so what he doesn't do is, is when he receives an abundant crop, appropriately redistribute it to his employees. And what the farmer also doesn't do is give glory to God the producer of the harvest. Right? He, he never acknowledges, right? I mean, it, it was an abundant crop that year. It, it, it doesn't say that he planted more crop that year. It, Jesus doesn't say, you know, he, he worked extra hard, he gained more land so that he could, you know, plant more, more grain and do all of these things. No, he just had an abundant crop that year. The farmer doesn't do any of these things. And at the end of this plan, at the end of this idea, after, at the end of this, he says, I'm going I'm to tear down these barns and build bigger ones. So that, he says this in Luke 12, verse 19, and I will say to myself, uh, say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. Now, I have been guilty of this thought. Uh, uh, a couple of months ago, Melissa and I had, um, my wife, um, had um, a, a week at our house while our um, three kids stayed with grandparents. And this was like the first time um, in, in over a year, right, since the beginning of COVID that this has happened. And, and, uh, and so we had, we had a week where we were working, she was doing schoolwork, uh, but still in the evenings we had to ourselves. And, and it was really an incredible time. And you know what we did most of that time we talked about our retirement <laughs> you know like like we talked about what it was going to be like when we retired and you know I'm, I'm I just turned 33 like I, I've got a ways to go you know like I'm so, so it was so funny to sit there and kind of talk about retirement but but we were really looking forward to this time and, and there are many of us who, who look forward to that time. You know, we've worked hard in our lives and, and, and we're putting money away so that we can make sure that we retire comfortably and we get to do the things that we haven't gotten to do before or that we get to do the things that we're used to doing. And, and that's a really good thing. That's a really good thing. But here's what I hope that we know. Here's what I hope that we know, that you may retire from your work, but you never retire from life. I want to say that again. You may retire from your work, but you never retire from life. This farmer has this idea that he is going to store enough crop and then he's just going to be done with life. The eat, drink, and be merry. This is, this is a quote from Ecclesiastes. And this, this quote is, is, is about like the vanity of life and, and just relaxing and not worrying about anything in life. And, and so Jesus is referencing something that the original listeners knew, that this farmer is planning on taking it off from life. My hope, my prayer is that we know that we may retire from work, but we never retire from life. We never retire from our faith in Jesus Christ. So many times within the church, we can get this backwards and we can think, you know what, like I've served my time. You know, I was, I was a faithful greeter for X amount of years. You know, I, 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 I distributed food for, for so many months. You know, I, I worked in the nursery for like a week and that was enough. You know what I mean? Like so many times we can think like I have served my time. I have followed Jesus and now I am retired from that. I am done from that. Friends, I hope that we know that we may retire from our work, but we never retire from our faith in Jesus Christ. We never retire from our life. Jesus, regardless of where you are in your life, Jesus asks you to follow him. And that does not stop because we stopped receiving a paycheck. That does not stop because our kids are grown up and, and, and out of the house now. That does not stop because we reached a certain age. Jesus will ask us to follow him every day of our life. And I pray that we never forget that. Regardless of how many times we've served in the church, regardless of how many places we've been or what we've done, Jesus will ask us to serve him every 
day of our life. Jesus tells this story, and he says, listen, there's, there's this rich farmer, and, and he gets this abundant crop. And he looks around, and he sees all these people in need. He, he sees these workers that have done him well, that have worked harder to receive this abundant crop. And what he decides to do, instead of distributing it to anybody else, instead of giving glory to God, he, he tears down his barns and builds bigger ones. So that, he says to himself, so that I can, I can relax, I can finally take off from life, eat, drink, and be merry, as Ecclesiastes says. This, this life is vanity, it doesn't matter, and so all I'm going to do is sit back and relax. And Jesus concludes this parable with this, Luke 12, verse 20 through 21. God said to the farmer, God said to him, you fool." This very night, your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is, Jesus says, so it is with those who store up treasures for themselves but are not rich toward God. So it is with those who store up treasure for themselves but are not rich toward God. Some people, some people are so poor, all they have is money. Friends, more will lead to more, and if we are consumed with putting more in our storehouses and and building bigger barns, that that, that desire will never be abated. That, that, That desire will never be quenched. But if our desire is to do more good in this world, if our desire is to be more like Jesus Christ, then we will live a truly satisfied and significant life. So my question for us is, have we moored the right things? In other words, what's in our storehouses? Have we strived for more of the wrong things and stored up our storehouses, or have we focused on being rich toward God, uh, serving Jesus Christ? That's my question for us this morning. And I, and I hope that you'll try something this, this, this morning. I, I, I know that, you know, some of us, like, we, we have a lot of stuff. I can, I can open a closet and see plenty of things that, that I have not used in a, in a significant amount of time, you know. And, and I can see, like, a lot of this stuff around me. And, and in reality, that stuff kind of, like, clutters my mind. It clutters my spirit because I have to still be concerned about it, even though it's, it, it, I think it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. So here's what I hope that you'll practice. Just try something this week. I I hope that you will intentionally give away something you've stored away, right? Intentionally give away something that you've stored away. You have something that would mean a lot to someone else. And in fact, it would mean more to them. And it might bring you actually great joy to know that they are using it. Right, That it might bring you joy to know that they have this thing and that when they see it, they will think of you. My hope and my prayer is that we will intentionally give away something that we've stored away. Why? Because more leads to more. And the longer that we keep things that we will never use, the longer it will occupy our hearts and our minds. My hope and my prayer is that when we get to the end of our life, We get to the end of our life and we have an opportunity to look back on the impact that we made. That we would not be people who have simply built bigger barns. But that we would be people who have been rich toward God. Amen. Let us pray. God, we are so thankful for this opportunity to be here before you. And, and, and we pray for the power of your Holy Spirit to be here now, God. That you, that you in this time would minister to us. 
God, we pray right now as wherever we are, whatever we are doing, God, if we are here in person, if we are, God, at home wrestling kids or doing dishes, whatever it is, God, I pray that your spirit would come to us now and minister to us so that your word may fall upon fertile soil. God, we pray this morning that we would not be people who build bigger barns, but be people who are rich toward you. And we ask it by the power of the Holy Spirit and in the mighty name of Jesus Christ who came and lived and taught us even how to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.